So let me say could say magnetic field you to a uh, slab of current. So um so by slab of current, what we mean is uh um plan um current that's exhibiting a planar symmetry, but instead of there being a single very thin plane of current, we say um we have a physically measurable thickness and for this to work out we'll say it'll it's a uniformly distributed current. So you'd have to imagine something like a plane that has a measurable thickness and we say current is flowing in this uh, slab um, in some uniformly distributed way. So let's say the current is oriented so that it's coming towards um, or it's coming out of the screen. So that's the setup of this question. And as we do this setup, it's good to recall uh, what magnetic field due to a plane of current looked like. So when we had a magnetic field due to a plane, single plane, a single very thin plane, so that we don't really discuss the thickness of the plane. As we looked for magnetic field due to this, um, what we considered was that, okay, um, this kind of current distribution with translational symmetry will have magnetic field oriented in such a way that at the top, as the current is coming towards you, the magnetic field will point to left, right to left. And uh, below that plane, you would have magnetic field pointing from left to right. And as we try to apply Ampere's law, where we say B dot DL all around the closed loop is equal to four pi, uh, K over C squared, current and closed. We consider the loop that looks like a, a square or looks like a rectangle uh, with a portion at the top and a portion at the bottom. And I would be careful in trying to symmetrically place this so that I can argue that the strength of magnetic field along the top is the same as the strength of magnetic field, field along the bottom. And because of the relative directions, perpendicular, we can say P dot DL along these segments are zero. So, uh, so that allows us to do this integral without actually knowing the magnetic field. We can say without knowing the value of the magnetic field, um, if the, the width of this rectangle is W, we can say this integral will be the strength of magnetic field times W. Oh, times two, because so I have two segments top and bottom. We say that's equal to four pi k over c squared current and closed. And to figure out the closed uh, current and closed, we had to know some kind of density. And we gave a symbol here. So density uh, sigma, which is a terrible choice of letter, was equal to the number of current um, or amount of current per length. So the current enclosed would be sigma, that line density of current, times the, the length. And we saw the widths cancel out. I can move the two. And we say magnetic field is equal to these, uh, well, products of these uh, constant coefficients. We get a surprising result that we don't need to know the height of the, uh, we don't need to know the distance from the plane. It's, it's all there. So, so with that in the background, <laughs> what we are now trying to do is find the magnetic field due to a slab of current. And the fact that this is a physical slab with some measurable thickness, that um, complicates some things. But I think we can think of that as a kind of modification from this inf uh, infinitesimally thin plane. So for example, if you are looking at the points up here, then uh, or points down here, then the fact that this has some thickness, it's not as important. Because I can imagine going through this exact argument. So, well, for, for one, the direction of magnetic fields will be exactly the same above 
you'll have magnetic field pointed to the left. Below, you'll have magnetic field pointed to the right. And if you imagine following this Ampere's law argument with an Amperian loop that looks like this, then basically not a single line of that argument needs to change. Because um, um, I think I still have enough intuition that along this segment, magnetic field will be perpendicular. So that P dot DL is zero. Same here. And um, so we give uh, this loop some width. So the left-hand side will be exactly the same as before. Two strength of magnetic field times the width. Um, that's the line integral. And on the right-hand side, now the way the density will be specified here will be different. Um, usually for current density, we say it's a J uh, for current density. And what this means is amount of current or uh, cross-sectional area. But you can imagine uh, that this uh, current density times the thickness of the slab would act like this uh, sigma. So the right-hand side changes a couple letters, but it more or less continues the same. So for these points out here, we can basically take this result here, which said um, that magnetic field is equal to uh, 4 divided by 2, 2 pi k over c squared times the, so instead of sigma, I guess I would have j times the thickness of the slab. You can just take that result and that'll be good for these regions, for, um, so let me define my coordinates. Uh, define this so that y is equal to zero here. So for either y greater than plus d over two or uh, y less than minus d over two. For those two regions, um, regions one or three, uh, basically that previously derived result will still hold. Nothing's changed. Where it gets interesting is the in-between regions. So what about for y in between greater than minus d over two and less than d over two? That's the interesting question here. That's the place where we can imagine applying uh, Ampere's law in a way that's a little bit different from how we uh, calculate the magnetic field due to a, a plane of current. So let's uh, walk through that in a couple minutes. I, I think it's good to build up some intuition for what magnetic field looks like inside. Um, if you have intuition what the magnetic field is like along the center here, where y is equal to zero, uh, if you have that intuition, great. And I hope your intuition says that magnetic field along this line is equal to zero. Um, how would I argue it? Um, I could argue this based on um, based on rotational symmetry. So this current distribution has a symmetry around 180 degree rotation like this. So if you took any kind of point as your center of rotation and rotate the whole thing 180 degrees around this way so that this portion is here, this portion is here, you haven't changed anything about the, um, about the current distribution. It looks the same. That's what symmetry means. Now, suppose at the middle of the slab that, you know, take this point, for example, and you said that magnetic field at this point, uh, point points in some direction. Then after you've completed your 180 degree rotation, this point hasn't changed, it's still there. Or, or I guess you would have to do rotation around this point. Now, the point hasn't changed, the current distribution hasn't changed, but the direction of magnetic field will have flipped around. Can't have that. So, so, in order to satisfy the symmetry and not get into trouble with these paradoxes, we have to say, oh, magnetic field at this point here, it can't point in that direction, in any direction. It has to be zero.
That way, when it gets turned around 180 degrees, nothing changes. So you have that sense. And uh, for any points that are above or below the center line, you can't make the same argument. Because when you take the point and rotate it 180 degrees, then it'll flip around. But I hope there's a enough intuition here that you can say, magnetic field in the upper half probably points to left, and magnetic field in the lower half probably points to right. So, um, so we can start there. <laughs> Let's say that um, that's the general sense of direction of magnetic field. And so it starts out as some value B naught outside at the edge here as it enters in lower, then it'll still point in the same direction. It might be changing in strength. And uh, at the center, it'll come to zero. And as you go above, it'll start to point to left. So with that picture in mind, uh, we can consider this Amperian loop to try to figure out what is the strength of magnetic field in this region? Let me consider this Amperian loop. We'll say the height of this loop is at a height y. Um, that's our variable. <laughs> and uh, let's give the loop uh, the well, same symbol that we are using for width. I'm hoping it'll somehow cancel out or disappear, but it, it's a loop of some width and of some uh, I guess the overall height is actually uh, 2y, because there's y here and y minus y below. And based on the symmetry, uh, uh, 180 degree rotational symmetry, I think I can argue that magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field on this upper half is the same strength of the magnetic field on this lower half. The magnitudes are the same, yeah? So, and uh, in between, the, along this segment, the magnetic field is perpendicular. So B dot DL will be zero. So with all of that, we can say this. Given the Ampere's law, B dot DL around the closed loop is equal to 4 pi k over C squared, current and closed. I can simplify the left-hand side. Um, I talked through most of it. You know, this integral is integral along four segments and uh, the vertical segments, it'll add up to zero. For the horizontal segment, it'll be the magnitude of magnetic field times the width of the, the length of the segment, W. And there are two of them. Uh, and the direction and the direction of the path, they are both uh, in the same direction, so it'll be double. Two B Y a W. So that's the left-hand side. For the right-hand side, you have these constants that you need to work through. And I have the current enclosed. So for the current enclosed, I have the current density J. And what I'll have to say is that uh, it will be this density times this area. That's how much current is enclosed within this loop. So I can say it's a current density, that's a current per area times the area of the loop. So that would be the width times height, 2i. So that's it. Uh, you can see that width cancels out, as I was hoping to. And I can move the 2 over and get an expression for the strength of the magnetic field. And uh, it's a function of y, as you might have guessed from me writing down y as a variable. It's uh, so 4 divided by 2. So 2 pi Coulomb constant over C squared times the current density. So far, it's quite close to what we had before. And instead of having some constant, it's, uh, oh, wait, wait, I have this 2 here. Um, so, oh, so where I, so I should have canceled this 2 with that 2. So uh, let me just write this out. So 4 pi still. 4 pi k j, and instead of multiplying to a constant, it multiplies to y times y. So magnetic field, as you go away from this center line, it increases linearly. Um, and then it increases linearly until it reaches here, where it reaches this constant value. 
and then it um, continues on. So if you were to plot this magnetic field as a function of y, it actually looks quite interesting because before with this plane of current, you had this. Um, so if you were plotting magnetic field as a function of y, uh, with a plane of current, you had a discontinuity in the magnetic field. It was some, um, so I guess saying right word is positive. It is some positive value before. Uh, and then as soon as you cl cross the plane, it became some negative value. There was this um, discontinuity in your <laughs> magnetic field as a function of y. Now, we did this slab of current where we don't have an infinitesimally thin plane, this uh, transition becomes more gradual. So below, uh, below minus D, there was, uh, um, there was some value of magnetic field that was negative and starting at minus D, magnetic field decreases linearly until it reaches zero. After that point, magnetic field um, points to left, so in the takes on negative value linearly up until it reaches some um, y equals d, and then it continues at that value. So, uh, and you know, you can kind of think of this uh, infinite plane as being the slab where you take the limit, d goes to zero. That would be the more physically natural and smooth way to treat it. Uh, but, you know, uh, mathematically, the uh, thin plane is really easy to deal with. So we do that first. And uh, we've never done the slab until now. So that's why I need to do it, show you that um, you can use Ampere's law to calculate magnetic field due to some uniform distribution of current.